Ash Ketchum currently ranks as THE best Pokemon trainer in the entirety of the anime. After 25 years, the 10-year-old from Palatown has a long list of achievements. A few of those achievements include becoming the champion of the Orange Islands, completing the Battle Frontier, becoming the first champion of the Alola region, and most impressive of all, winning the Masters 8, effectively making him the strongest Pokemon trainer in the world. So, knowing all this, it should come as no surprise that Ash has a large assortment of powerful Pokemon. But now that he's officially done, I've gone through every Pokemon he's ever owned, and I've created his ultimate team. I'll be going through each of his 8 different teams from each region and choosing which of them deserves consideration to this ultimate team. We've got over 75 different Pokemon to review and discuss, so sit back, grab a jelly filled donut, and relax. Alright then, we've got a lot of work to do here, so let's get right into it. During Ash's journey through Kanto, he caught 10 different Pokemon, but we'll also be counting the Orange Islands here, so we'll add two more. This certainly will be the biggest team we're looking at for today's video, but luckily we're able to knock off a few Pokemon pretty easily here. Primate, Lapras, and Butterfree will be the first to leave us today. Yeah, they're great and iconic, however they have very little battling experience and have been released by Ash altogether. Muck and Kingler will also get the boot here. They had pretty impressive feats during the Kanto League, however they haven't seen much action in battle since. Pidgeot and Ash's 30 Tauroses will also not be moving on, as they don't really live up to the ultimate team caliber. However, they're certainly solid Pokemon in their own right. Finally, this one hurts, but we're also not going to be moving forward with Bulbasaur and Squirtle. They're definitely some of Ash's most iconic Pokemon ever. However, seeing as they're only first form Pokemon, I just don't think they can stack up to the competition. Sorry guys. That'll leave us with Snorlax, Charizard, and Pikachu all moving on to the second round. Snorlax really needs no introduction. He impressively was able to use six moves in one battle, a battle in which he was facing off with Frontier Brain Greta's two fighting types. Snorlax winning this battle was truly incredible and showed off how powerful he really is. As for Charizard, this was Ash's main powerhouse for basically a decade. After a very bumpy start, once Ash and Charizard began seeing eye to eye, very few opponents were able to get the better of them. Charizard has squared off with legendaries and come through in a multitude of battles, so he's certainly going to be moving on. And as for Pikachu, what do I even gotta say? He's probably the strongest mon in the entire Pokemon anime universe. This yellow mouse might have more plot armor than Goku. Let's move on to Johto. Ash had six new Pokemon added to his team in Johto, and well, I guess seven if you count Larvitar, but I'll be honest, there's no point in adding him here as he wouldn't make it very far. So we've got Quillava, Totodile, Bayleaf, Noctowl, Heracross, and Donphan. Well, the only one worth consideration here is Heracross. These other mons just really aren't that powerful. During the Johto anime, Ash mostly relied on his older, stronger, and more established Kanto mons for his biggest battles, and in many of his major Johto League matches, Ash relied on his Kanto mons to anchor his team. Just look at the fight with Gary. Heracross, though, was certainly the bright spot of an overall underwhelming Johto team. He had access to a wide variety of impressive moves like Mega Horn and Focus Punch. Heracross also had a pretty strong showing in the Sinnoh League by taking down Nando's Cricket Tomb, but his most iconic moment is taking a point blank fire blast, then taking down Gary's Magmar in the Johto League. Like Ash himself, we'll take a fresh start here in Hoenn. Here, Ash caught five new Pokemon, and honestly, they were all pretty impressive. However, Glalie will be the first one out from this group, as he was just used the least. I mean, Ash didn't even bring Glalie back for a battle in the Battle Frontier. That really speaks volumes. Next out of the Hoenn Bunch is Torkoal. He is just simply not good. Plus, I don't even know if Torkoal wants to be alive. Corfish, unfortunately, will also not be moving on. While I'd argue that he's Ash's most underrated Pokemon, it just needs to evolve for more power. Plus, he also lost Ash his last ever official match. So yeah, that kind of leaves a sour taste in my mouth. That means the two Pokemon moving on to next round are Sceptile and Swellow. Swellow just so happens to be Ash's best bird. Yup, you heard that right. Swellow has caught rollouts from a Dawn fan, beaten its own shiny form, and most impressive of all, Thunder Armor. And as for Sceptile, well, Sceptile beat Darkrai, so yeah, Sceptile's gonna be moving on here. Let's move on to Sinnoh. Ash's Sinnoh team was certainly one of his best ever. 
However, of the six new Pokemon Ash obtained in Sinnoh, only Infernape will be moving on. Gibble and Buizel, while formidable, they're first stage Pokemon and simply can't hold up to other powerhouses. Meanwhile, Torterra and Staraptor started off the Sinnoh League by winning Ash many major battles, but they certainly took a backseat to Infernape once he joined the team. And in Torterra's case, I'm not sure we've ever seen a Pokemon fall off as hard as he did. And as for Gliscor, he was definitely a lovable Pokemon, but he only has three career wins to his name. So yeah, that's simply not enough. Even though he was able to take down Paul's OP Drapion, Infernape was certainly the Sinnoh Ace. Beyond just being the Pokemon with arguably the best story arc in anime history, he has access to an incredibly powerful and OP Blaze ability. He's also gained some great experience battling against other impressive Pokemon, like Flint's Infernape, a wild Moltres, and all of Ash's other fire types back at Oak's lab. So, with all this being said, Infernape will definitely move on to the second round. Oh boy, now it's time for the Unova team. And I think we all know how this one will go. We'll make this one a quickie. Everyone except Crocodile will be getting the boot here. In Unova, Ash caught way too many Pokemon for any of them to properly develop. I mean, just look at this team here. There's only three fully evolved Pokemon total. Crocodile undoubtedly stands out amongst its peers. Beyond just having a sick amount of swagger and style, his power's no joke either. He was able to take down Iris' powerful Dragonite, as well as Stefan's Sock, which, I'll remind you, did have the typing advantage. So the Killer Croc will move on. Now on to Kalos, another incredibly powerful Ash Ketchum team. Everyone on this team is impressive and has some memorable wins. Well, except for Noivern. The most impressive thing Noivern ever did was tie Sawyer Salamence. Bruh. Bruh. As such, Noivern has been eliminated for consideration for Ash's ultimate team. We will also be taking Halucha and Talonflame out of consideration. These two did a great job anchoring Ash's team towards the beginning of his Kalos journey, and they helped him win some early badges. However, as the series went on and the opponents got stronger, these two just simply couldn't keep up. So, that means Gudra and Greninja will both move on. Greninja is undoubtedly one of Ash's best Pokemon ever. The two share a one-of-a-kind special bond that raises Greninja's power, and this bond phenomenon also isn't considered a battle gimmick like Mega Evolution or Gigantamax, so that's something definitely worth noting. At the time, Greninja carried Ash further in any regional tournament than he had ever been before. We also see that Greninja's been keeping up with his training as he was able to body, but then later on mentor Ash's Lucario in Journeys. And I'm gonna have Gudra advance, because, well yes, I know she had a rough return in the Kalos League, she was just a bit rusty is all. Before leaving Ash's team, she was arguably his most powerful Pokemon ever. We all remember that win percentage graphic. As such, I think it's fair to have Gudra move on. Now it's time for the team that won Ash's first ever regional tournament, his Alola team. It should come as no surprise that this team is filled with some powerhouses. So let's take a deeper look here. We've got Naganadel, Incineroar, God, Melmetal, and Lycanroc. This is going to be tough to make some cuts here. It pains me to do this, but I'm going to cut both Melmetal and Naganadel. And it's not because they're bad or weak, it's only because they're a bit underdeveloped. They've only really each fought in about three official battles, and while well, yeah they did well, that's just not enough. There's no doubt that there's some serious firepower behind these guys, however, they could definitely use more training and practice. Now, I have to make another tough decision. The next Pokemon I'll be cutting is Rowlet. Now, yes, memes aside, I know he's very strong and very cute as well, but guys, he's only a first form Rowlet. He just can't keep up with the big dogs and big cats. So moving on will be Incineroar and Lycanroc. Lycanroc was the ace of the Alola team for pretty much the entirety of the series. He was Ash's first fully evolved Mon, it got its own exclusive form, and oh, he literally won Ash the entire league. And that's not even to mention that Lycanroc has access to its own exclusive Z-move. And as for Incineroar? Well, I'd argue Incineroar is the strongest Pokemon in all of Alola. Why? Well, because he beat the previous strongest Pokemon in all of Alola. That, of course, being the Mask Royals in Cineroar. So yeah, he definitely deserves to move on. Finally, we come to Ash's newest team. His world team slash his journeys team. And guys, everyone from this team is gonna advance. 
I mean, duh. They literally won him the world championship and made him the strongest trainer in the world. One would argue that this is actually Ash's ultimate team. Now, that certainly wouldn't be me, but I bet someone out there saying that. Let's just go down the list. Dragonite was a powerhouse for pretty much all of Journeys, defeating the likes of Karina's Mega Lucario, Iris's Haxorus, and even Leon's Dragapult. Surfetch was really a great support Pokemon in the Masters 8 tournament. I'd say he was the quiet MVP of the Cynthia battle as he did a lot of the dirty work. Dracovish may be the least impressive Pokemon on this list, but he beat Leon's Rillaboom, and we all know how broken that thing was. Gengar was definitely the most improved on this team. He went from first class jobber to giganta maxing beast. And Lucario, he's got a mega evolution, he's got the aura bond with Ash, and he's got plot armor. No, but for real though, Ash's Lucario is incredibly powerful and has access to a mega form and even gigantic aura spheres. All right, well that's everyone. Well, let's take a look at every Pokemon who's gonna be moving on to the second round. From Kanto, we kept Pikachu, Charizard, and Snorlax. From Johto, we kept Heracross. From Hoenn, we kept Sceptile and Swellow. From Sinnoh, we kept Infernape. From Unova, we kept Crocodile. From Kalos, we kept Greninja and Gudra. From Alola, we kept Lycanroc and Incineroar. And last but not least, we kept Ash's entire Journey's team. Alright, that's 17 Pokemon in total. Now I think it's important to look at things like feats, win rate, and special abilities. Let's discuss in round 2. Pikachu has battled in 199 official battles. He's won 132, lost 59, and tied in 8, finishing his career with a win rate of 68%. His lists of feats are long and impressive, taking down Tapu Koko, Regiice, every Metagross ever, and of course Leon's Charizard. Pikachu also has access to his exclusive Z-Move 10 million volt Thunderbolt, an attack that almost always KOs its target. Plus, Pikachu can Gigantamax as well. Charizard, on the other hand, has won 18 battles and lost 7, and many of those were either when he was a Charmander or when he was disobedient. But, all in all, that gives him a 72% win rate. His best feats include defeating half of Gary's team, including his Blastoise, and of course beating Nolan's Articuno. As for Snorlax, he has 11 wins and only 3 losses. His most impressive feat was when he took down both Greta's Hariyama and Metacham, and his special ability is that he's able to use a whopping 6 different moves in battle. Heracross has a very underwhelming battle record at 43%, with only 3 wins and 4 losses. His most impressive wins are either against Shingo Scizor or Gary's Magmar. Sceptile has 16 wins, 13 losses, and 1 tie. And yeah, actually a ton of those losses came as a Grovile, so make note of that. That means his win rate is a solid 55%. His feats are among the best of any Pokemon ever. He KO'd the undefeated Darkrai, he caught a speed form Deoxys from behind, and he took down two Battle Frontier Pokemon in one battle. He also has access to the Overgrowth ability, which powers up his Grass-type moves. Swellow is undoubtedly Ash's best bird, with a win record of 63%, including 14 wins, 8 losses, and 1 tie. With its incredible speed and power, it was able to take down Winona's Swellow and Spencer's Venusaur. Ash's Infernape has an incredible 17 wins, 6 losses, and 2 ties, which comes in at a strong 73% win rate. His best wins include Paul's Electivire, Volkner's Luxray, and Ash's other fire types back at Oak's Lab, and we all know he has access to a very special and overpowered Blaze ability. Crocodile comes in with a very impressive 80% win rate, but that's only because he's only fought in 5 battles, with 4 wins and 1 loss. His best feats include beating Iris's Dragonite and beating Stefan's Sock. Next is Ash's Gudra. She has an astounding 2 wins, 1 loss, and 1 tie. Her best moment is of course beating Clement's Luxray, and that's about it. Meanwhile, Greninja has a lot more battling experience with a strong 17 wins to 8 losses, which means he comes in at a 68% win rate. His best feat is probably defeating Sawyer's Mega Sceptile in the Kalos League, and his special ability is obviously its OP bond phenomenon it forms with Ash. Incineroar boasts an impressive 67% win rate with 6 wins and 3 losses. His best feat is certainly defeating Kakui's Incineroar, while at the time, it was only a Tauracat. Plus, Incineroar also has access to an epic-looking Blaze ability. Lycanroc has a bit more battle experience with 7 wins and 4 losses, coming in at a strong 64% win rate. His best feat is obviously winning Ash the Alola League by defeating Gladian's Lycanroc. 
Ashes Surfetched is a bit more underwhelming with 6 wins and 7 losses to his name. His best feat is the job he did against Cynthia's team, taking down her Milotic, removing Stealth Rocks, and bringing Garchomp to his knee. Dracovish, on the other hand, has a 56% win rate with 5 wins and 4 losses. Its best win is definitely taking down Leon's OP Rillaboom. It's also worth noting that Dracovish has access to a weird Dragonic stored power, but we don't really know much about that and it wasn't really explained to us. Dragonite took part in 8 official battles, racking up 4 wins and 4 losses, meaning she has an even 50% win rate. Her best win is probably defeating Iris' Haxorus. Gengar has 7 wins, 6 losses, and 1 tie to his name, which means he had a win rate of 54%. His best win probably came against Leon's Inteleon, or maybe even against Steven's Agron. Of course, Gengar has access to a Gigantamax form that makes him incredibly powerful. And finally, Ash's Lucario finished with 13 wins, 5 losses, and 2 ties, meaning the Aura Pokemon had a 70% win rate. His best win is definitely taking down Cynthia's Dynamax Togekiss, as well as her Garchomp. And finally, Lucario has access to Mega Evolution. He also has uniquely powerful aura abilities, allowing him to create giant aura spheres. Okay, now we know the win rates and total battles of each Pokemon. So like Thanos, I'm gonna erase anyone with either a win rate below 50%, or anyone that took place in less than 10 battles ever. So that leaves us with Pikachu, Charizard, Snorlax, Sceptile, Swellow, Infernape, Greninja, Lycanroc, Gengar, and Lucario. Well, here we are. The final nine Pokemon, and as we all know, you can only use six Pokemon in a single battle, so three must be cut. All nine of these Pokemon have incredible power, feats, moments, and wins to their name, so this will not be easy. I think now we should start building the team with who we know is definitely in. The first spot is obviously going to Pikachu. This one's a no-brainer. Pikachu is Ash's strongest Pokemon and his longtime partner. He's taken down plenty of legendaries and broken Pokemon before, so yeah, he earns a spot here. Next is Greninja. He's the only water type as well as the only dark type here, so the type diversity he adds to this team is great. That and how he's able to reach incredible levels in power with the Ash Greninja form. With amazing speed and powers like a giant water shuriken, Greninja will certainly earn himself a spot on Ash's ultimate team. Lucario will also earn a spot on this team, as he's basically Greninja 2.0. Pretty much everything Greninja can do, Lucario can do too. And in some cases, he can even do it better than his Ninja Frog mentor. I'd be willing to bet if Greninja and Lucario were on the same team, their powers would find a whole new level of strength. Well, those were the shoe ins and now we've got 6 Pokemon left with 3 spots to fill. I'll cut some of the suspense out right away and tell you Swellow will not be earning a spot on this list. While yes, he is undoubtedly Ash's best bird, he just isn't as powerful as the remaining Mons. I mean, in his last two battle appearances, Swellow was kind of embarrassed. So, sorry Swellow. We're now down to just five Pokemon total, and the next Pokemon selected here will be Gengar. Maybe a surprising pick, but I think Gengar adds a great deal of versatility to this team. Obviously, he has the ability to Gigantamax, but that's just the beginning of it. His two types are totally unique to the rest of this team, and his move pool includes moves of Fairy, Ghost, and Poison typing, along with a Will-O-Wisp attack that could cripple any physical attackers. Meanwhile, in his Gigantamax form, Gengar is able to tank hits, or even remove weather conditions. Okay, moving on, the next Pokemon earning a spot on this team is Sceptile. Now, taking a look at the remaining Pokemon, none of these Mons have access to special powered up forms beyond just their abilities. So as such, I'd argue that Sceptile has the most raw power of any of them. He's certainly the fastest of any of Ash's Pokemon, easily displayed by this feat here. Meanwhile, his strength is similarly off the charts strong. He did essentially one-shot Tobias' Darkrai, who was likely at full health thanks to the healing effects of Dream Eater, all of this, along with the Overgrowth ability and the unique Grass Typing, earned Sceptile the 5th spot on Ash's Ultimate Team. Well, here we are, the final spot on the Ultimate Team of Ash Ketchum. Infernape, Snorlax, Charizard, and Lycanroc are all amazing Pokémon. However, of the four, the one earning the final spot here is... Charizard. Yes, it had to be. He's the best! I mean, how could Ash not go with him? For almost the entirety of Ash's early battling days, he relied on Charizard to anchor his major battles. 
While Lycanroc and Snorlax are great and have done some amazing things for Ash, their feats and power are still relatively normal. Meanwhile with Infernape, he loses this spot to Charizard for a multitude of reasons. First off, with respect to power, we've never seen Infernape win any super impressive battles. While well, yes, his showing against Paul in the Sinnoh League was awesome, Paul at the time was just an above average trainer. Charizard has thrown hands with Frontier Brains and Legendaries, and it was also never even stated that Infernape was able to beat Charizard at Oak's Lab. All of that, along with us already having a fighting type on the Ultimate Team thanks to Lucario, and Charizard's ability to fly, which will create more unpredictability to Ash's team, which obviously Ash is a big fan of. So, that does it. This is who I believe is Ash Ketchum's Ultimate Team. It's too bad we won't likely ever get to see him use a team like this, but who knows? Maybe one day. Also, guys, remember, this team is just my opinion. There's things like nostalgia and bias that certainly play a factor here. There's like 15 Pokemon of Ashes that you can mix and match onto this team, and it would still be awesome and powerful. Let me know who exactly you think Ash's ultimate team is in the comment section below. Well, guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. This was probably my favorite video I've ever made. Ash Ketchum was one of the heroes of my childhood, so of course I love getting to go through all his old Pokemon and reminiscing the good times. 